Awesome, I stop. Hello everyone. Uh, this is my talk on Drupal Consult. So uh, I'll do a little bit of introducing myself first. So my name is Karen Gray. Uh, I am a senior Drupal developer at Invika. Uh, I'll let some people more come in. Come in. Uh, I've been working uh, with Drupal for the past seven plus years. Um, if you follow me on uh, LinkedIn, you'll know that I'm a professional cat herder. And if you follow me on Twitter, you know I'm a little bit of a muse man. So that's my introduction. Um, so, what is Drupal Console? Uh, well, basically, it is a, it's a bunch of tools uh, that are driven in the command line, uh, which lets you generate all the code and it lets you interact uh, with your uh, Drupal 8 installation. So it can let you do things like rebuilding your caches, uh, working with configuration management, creating new modules. Um, so you might think to yourself, well, what about Drush? Well, Drush has been around for a very long time. It's been around since Drupal 4.7. Uh, Drush has a lot more features, but it works on old design concepts. Whereas Drupal Console, uh, it's been written for Drupal 8, so it uses the modern uh, practices that Drupal 8 uses, but it's simply components, and it uses like the, uh, the new design practices. And the good thing about it, it has a bunch of new features to make your life with Drupal 8 that little bit better for you. So, what I've done for this uh, talk is I've installed a uh, local version of uh, Drupal using Drupal VM on my machine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install uh, Drupal using uh, Drupal console. So using the command uh, Drupal site install, I have luckily pre-recorded everything I've done, so there's no live demos here. <laughs> so put in the command, wait for it to kick in a little bit. Uh, it'll ask you what uh, installation you want to use. So I'm using the standard one. Uh, you can ask what language, what kind of database you want to use. Uh, you put in your database details based on what we just used for Drupal VM, which is the standard Drupal Drupal. Can you turn the resolution up? Because you know what it's doing. Because it's not really readable. I wouldn't have a clue how. This is plugged so in. It's on, it's on the display. You just select a different display. Yeah. It's done through VGA, so I'm, I'm not sure. Hang on. <laughs> one of the one of these. Um, oh right, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go to the display settings? Oh, hold on one second. See, it's a, a bit fuzzy. That's the problem. And what you're showing is all CLI, isn't it? it can be, yeah. So if you go to the actual window, uh, the Mac display settings. Displays, yeah. So go to s hit scaled. Yeah. What's that look like now? Option, yeah. Hit option, which is. Is that command or the one next to it? The all. Yeah. So hit option now. Hit scaled. Where is it? Where it says the scaled button. Hmm. Yeah, it's not doing it. It's got this. Well, what happens if you just if you put the radio button on scale? That's at the radio button on scale. It's on there. No, it's on default. Display, right? No, no, it's on scale on here. You've got oh. different. You have different. Um, <laughs> display, you have to move them up. Tick, tick the box that says gather yeah, window. Yeah, gather window. Yeah, I think you have to change the resolution. Why is it showing that different? This man knows he's got just experience. Just, 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 just pull the brightness up as much as you can. All right? We might be able to. Okay. 
чувствует. No, no, it won't be an RGB issue. It's um, no, no, no. It's a resolution issue. I don't think there's it's an LED. resolution issue. There we go. Sorry, I think we're just gonna. What we were shown this morning was that we had to set it to scale, and then you had to set it to a, a different resolution to make it work. Yeah. Well, were you here then this morning? Yeah. And that's what's not happening. So we need to go into settings of display. <coughs> yeah, yeah it's, you need to, they need to be able to see what you've got on screen, don't they? Yeah. So we need it clearer than that. Does that say, or would you run with what you've got? Well, we haven't got a lot of choice, have we? Yeah, we can. We can. It's not using HDMI for a start, it's using VDF. Yeah. I can't, I can't help. It's video. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right, so I'll let all this go through again. So it's installing, installing Drupal for you. So it goes through a bunch of questions. So you set like the standard installation, uh, using MySQL for us, put in your database details. Trust Karen have issues. What's the issue? Oh, Alex. Is it working now? It's just really fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> Got to turn it off and on, that's it. <laughs> Is that it? It's really fuzzy. It's just fuzzy. Yeah. It's fine. Fine? Yeah. All right. I'll go set my DJ booth up. Right, so once you've gone through the questions, it goes through and starts uh, building your Drupal 8 installation for you. So this takes about 40 seconds. Um, so what I can quickly talk to you about is that it has all default settings in the yellow bit. So if you're happy with those um, information, you can just press enter and it will use that uh, default information for you. Is that where it puts that sun with? <laughs> yeah. Almost there, almost. Right, so it's done. So if we go to the browser and check the website, there it is, it's installed. So what we can do now is we can create a new custom module. So using the Drupal generate module command, we can create any custom module for you. So when it kicks in, <laughs> Uh, it'll ask you what you want to call your module. So, for my example, I'm going to call it CATS. Uh, <laughs> so, you can keep the machine name uh, or you can prefix it. So, I think I've uh, prefixed it with Invika. I'm um, keeping the default path or modules as uh, custom. Uh, you can put in any description you like. So, I'll put in my awesome module about CATS. Uh, you can set like a custom package name. So, I'm keeping to my prefix of Invika. In core version. Uh, I've said yes to a module file because I'll be using this later. Uh, I don't want it as a feature, so I've kept to no. Uh, I don't need a composer JSON file for this example, so again I've selected no. I don't need any dependencies. I don't want to do any unit testing, and I don't want it translatable. So all of these I can just say no to. And then you confirm generation. And there it is. So it's created two files for you. So it's created the YAML file, the info, and a module file for you. So when I started working with Drupal 8, it was massively daunting for me to begin with, uh, going from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, because the way you create a custom module 
is completely different. You've got all these brand new files, all these YAML files. It gets a little bit confusing, a little bit daunting. So doing something like this takes away that pressure from you and it just does it for you, which is fantastic. So if we go to our module page, we can see there's our new module right there. So it's worked perfectly. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create a content entity uh, for this module. So we're using the Drupal generate entity content function. So what I want to do with my with my custom module is I want to create I want to create an FAQ for it. And I want to have it uh, attached to a different content type. So that's what I'm going to do here. When it kicks in. There you go. So we use the module we've just created. Uh, the class, I'm going to call it FAQ. Machine name's fine. And the label, I'm just going to catalyze it. The base path is fine, we'll keep that as is. Uh, I don't want it to be a bundle, so I've kept it to no. I don't need it translatable, so I've said no. Don't want it provisionable. And it's created all these files for you. So that's quite a lot of files. So you probably might be able to read it, but uh, briefly explain what it's done. It's created a tweak template for you. It's created the form settings pages for you. It's created uh, access control handlers for you. It's created permission files. It's created links. So all of that work, it's done it all for you, so you don't have to worry about it. And the good thing about this, this is boilerplate code. So you, there's things in here you don't need. So you can just rip them out, you can put things in. So we'll cover that in a little bit. Did you have to move them to your uh, cat subdirectory, the module directory, before you did that? Or no. Was the first thing? It's, all, it's all done in .root. Uh, so if we go to the, the sets page we just created, you can see here, FAQ settings. And because it's a content entity, we can create uh, fields for this, for this entity. So I've gone a little bit ahead, and I've gone and created a body field, because um, you don't want to see me creating content, <laughs> it's too slow. So if we go to manage fields, I've created a, bon a body thing in here. So the next thing I want to do is I want to attach uh, this FAQ uh, to a content type. So I'm going to attach it to the article. And um, use that using entity reference. So I've already created it here. And if I go to edit it, and I'll just demonstrate that in the field settings, but I've selected the FAQ as the item of reference that we're going to be using. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some content. So if I add content and go to article, put in a title for, I don't know, cat's FAQ, what we're going to be creating. If we go down to the bottom, there's our content entity. So you use the, the name for the question. So I put in how many lives do cats have? And my answer will be nine fluffy lives. So we go ahead and save this. And there's our content. So we can see the entity title and the body field that we created. That looks a little bit plain, so I've added some CSS. And there we go, we've got like something that resembles an FAQ. So, what can we improve on this? So, with Drupal Console, it's boilerplate code. So, everything that it generates for you, you don't have to keep that. You can put stuff in, you can take stuff out. So one thing that I did notice is that content entities comes with a published status by default. I don't need this because I'm not defining if this is published or unpublished. It just seems like code that I don't need. So I'm going to rip it out. So there's several places that uh, this exists. So in the FAQ interface file, uh, you've got is published and another one I just deleted. So I've got rid of them and then the, the fields themselves in the class PHP, they can just go. Uh, the next place is in the access uh, control handler. So we've got an if statement in there to check if the content's published or not. I don't need this, but I do need to have it viewable. If 
but I don't need the published part. So I just take out the part that says publish and I just have a few FAQ entities. And then in the permission general, I take out the unpublished one and just rename the published one to say view FAQ entities. <coughs> so I need to check that I haven't just bugged everything up. So I'm going to clear the cache. I did treat, cheat, and use Drush because it's a little bit quicker. So that's cleared, and if I refresh the page, it's still there. So I haven't messed up any sort of viewing capabilities for this uh, content. So <coughs> the next thing we can do is we can create some dummy content for this. So this is very handy for QA environments where they need to uh, test your environment and test what you've built. Um, before you would use Devel for this, but with Drupal Console you don't need it anymore. You can just run Drupal Create Nodes. So if you run, run the function, it'll ask you what content type you want to create. So we select an article. It'll say how many you want to create. So I'm just making five, <coughs> nice and easy to tile. Uh, keep that to five. Set it to now. You can set it in the past if you need to. And it's created all the content. So if I go to my content overview, there's all my created content. And if I click on one of these, you're able to see all the content that's been generated for it. And at the bottom, it's some new FAQs. Now I did cheat a little bit and I did create some FAQs beforehand because that function will reference existing FAQ entities. So again, that's something that could be improved on in the future where it, you can tell it to create new ones for you, which would really help for the QA instances. Now before, I created a body field and that was just in the UI. So I need to export this information back into our code base. So we can export this using uh, configuration management. So we've got Drupal config export. So this is a nice, simple function. You just run it, and wherever you've set uh, the directory to export your configuration, it will just pop it in there for you. So I'll quickly show you where it is in my directory. So there it is outside my doc root in config. There's my entire site configuration. Now we should really test if this has actually picked it up and it works. So I'm just going to make a nice quick change, like changing the email address of the site. So I change it from Karen to Cats. And then we should check this in the configuration management to see if it's actually picked it up. And there it is. So we've got a change in there now. And if you view the differences, you can see the change between Karen and Cats. So just to overview uh, what I've just covered, so you can install your Drupal site using Drupal site install, you can create your own custom module using Drupal generate module, you can create your own entity contents using Drupal generate entity content, you can create some dummy nodes and you can export your configuration. The Drupal console documentation is really good if you need to cover any of it. Uh, you can go to drupalconsole.com or that ridiculously long URL to go to uh, the page which shows you all the, all the different functions that there are. There's 152 commands so far, so go ahead, go use it and go create something amazing. Thank you. I'm a professional cat herder, if you heard it at the beginning, but yeah, it would be just an example to use. So dependency on cats then, or that? Me. Is it compatible with dogs? It could be. So, do you just create a custom entity from the command line? Yes. Because I've never seen this 
So you, you can create uh, like entities and you can create custom uh, content entities as well. Um, so during the content entity, you can ask, it asks, uh, do you want it to be a bundle or not? So you can make it an actual content type if you like. But for my own example, I didn't see the need to, so I just attached it to the article because it already existed. Yep. Go back a slide. It's just a cat. <laughs> <laughs> that one or that one? That's the one. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, the project I've just uh, done at work, the one I used the most was the content entities one, so that's the one I, I featured, because um, I had to create an FAQ, funnily enough, um, and other different types, so I thought that was the best one to show, because that was the one that kind of impressed me the most, and I was like, doing the project, I haven't used Drupal Console before, and I was like, this is actually pretty handy, I could do a talk about this, so that's where it came from. The form, the form. I mean, it could do. I mean, you can clear cut uh, Drush with Drupal Console. I just found it a little bit too slow for this demonstration, but it, it does it just as well. Does it do, does Console do anything like syncing sites or dumping databases, any of that sort of stuff that I use Drush a lot for? Uh, it can do, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, <laughs> you don't know. Is Console easy to update? Like, I installed it a year ago and have not touched it. Oh, uh, well. I got it installed when I did my Drupal BM, so it was part of that. Um, but I, c I can't see a reason why it wouldn't be easy to update. So when you talk about composer, yeah, so you just do composer update, and it, sh it should just pick it up. Yep. Um, is it extensible, like Rush? Can we write our own command? I think so. I can't see why not. Yeah. Yep. Does it have something similar to Rush Aliases? So it's got like uh, I don't know, but I can certainly check and let you know. <laughs> yep. How important do you think it is that you understand what it's doing? Uh, some important. I mean, I'm a back-end developer, so I do quite understand what it's doing. But if you're a site builder and you don't really understand the whole jargon, that just keeps knocking off, um, of what it's doing, it's good for that because sometimes you don't need to know what it's doing. And you can leave the code as it is. You don't have to play around. You don't have to rip functions out like I do. I just did it because if there's code there, you don't need. Why, why do you need it in there? Yep. Can it update modules? Uh, I know you can download them, um, and you can use like. But mainly for Drupal 8, you use Composer now, I think. So. If you're, if you're using your Composer JSON, I think that's probably the best place to update your modules. Anyone else? If you're not yeah. using the uh, VIA, installing com um, console, as you mentioned about Composer, that would also be good. Say again? Um, just installing console. I mean, yeah, you can install it globally, so it'll work throughout everything. But for this, yeah, this instance, I just I put it together with Drupal BM, and it was part of one of the uh, requirements. I told it get a Drupal console for me, and it did. Okay, so we've finished quite early, it's uh, 20 to 5, so everyone can go to the pub early. <laughs> Thank you.